Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome back to another episode of Passing the Peace Pipe. Today we are doing Reality Series Part 3 and Perceptions, because depending on who you are and where you are and when you are, everything can be a bit different. Mm, isn't that kind of impacting everyone's own realities? You know? You feel me? But anyway, this is your residential charm in the packer. Blitz freak, chief of all blitz freaks. Excellent. They're a they're a powerful tribe. They originated in Europe. They've uh, been known from roaming the lands, playing in the fields, and romping. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's a different reality, because it's all about realities and perceptions these this week. So yeah, perceptions and reality. Because sometimes, you know, you think the world's one way for a while and then you learn a certain fact and everything and then your entire reality changes. Like, do you ever get that when you learn a certain new word and it's just like that word just starts popping up everywhere and you're just like holy shit was this always here or is it just like everyone's just using it now or am I just noticing it because I now know it that's yeah. true I guess that makes perfect sense I mean mm. if you learned what a new colour was called you'd probably notice that all the time going god damn where's this canary yellow keep coming from <laughs> yeah it can be everywhere. Well, that's like gets us on to or aliens. Because you've learnt this word, uh, aliens now putting it everywhere, which becomes onto our first reality theory of the day. <laughs> Is this all an alien simulation? And we're all not that we're all plugged into something, or we could be, but Earth could be this kind of naturally terraformed arena where we all live and we're secretly getting spied spied on for entertainment of another alien race. I like the Truman Show. Yeah, but instead the of Truman, Truman show. every Earthling is yeah. Truman. And don't you ever feel like some days you're just getting fucked with? Like you just have this really bad string of bad luck, and you're just like, what the shit? Like, your alarm doesn't go off, and then, like, you go to the... F you're like, holy shit, I'm late for work. You go to the fridge to make breakfast, but then you're fucking... The power's down, and your food's all spoiled, and you're like, what the fuck? And then you're like, all right, fuck it, I'll just get to work. And then you're catching, like, every red light there, and you're just like, what the shit, I'll take this shortcut. But then you try and take this shortcut, and there's roadworks there. It's like, man, this is just fucked. Like yeah, no, I've got, like, I've got I got theories on good luck and bad luck, and I I, I don't I don't believe them because mm. I mean I, I know this sounds stupid. Uh, do you think it could be aliens pushing all these things in your, your path just to fuck with you, just no, seeing who could break and I, they can record it for views? Okay, that's possible, but then that is that's up a lot of it's up to ourselves because we know fetched. when we drive around so like the speed limit in a lot of areas near us is 50 or 60 kilometers mm -hmm. now what you'll find is if you accelerate perfectly off from one red light and you do the speed limit you will get red light after red light for some reason our government has designed the lights to work like that if you manage to make a green light you'll probably continue to get green lights the only way to get out of the bad luck of the red light is to speed get through the next one and then you're good however if you're not paying attention because you're angry about the red lights you might get caught speeding in trying to prove your luck and then all of a sudden you go ah oh, i was getting red lights now i'm getting a fine now i'm going to be late for work things compound one bit of bad luck causes someone to get angry it causes them then have another accident then in their head they go oh things happen in threes they will cause the last thing oh, fuck. and and good luck's just the just the opposite because you tell me you can you'll see a, a good example would be there could be a guy out there who you go man this guy's never got laid and then he gets laid and you go oh my god he got laid once in his life and 
now it's just happening all the time because this motherfucker thinks that he's actually lucky now so he's walking around just like a lucky man waiting for the next lucky thing to happen whilst also trying to make it happen mm. so I think it's I think good luck and bad luck are total m- mental things oh, yeah. But maybe aliens again. That doesn't take anything away from the theory. <laughs> maybe aliens want to see who Sound can like determine this. We're the History Channel over here, but aliens. Look, I would gamble. I would. I mean, if if I was aliens, you could gamble on us because they're probably laughing, going the rule of three. They're probably they're probably going. Oh, let's bet on this guy. He's already had two things go wrong today. Surely he's going to have the third because he's a stupid human, and they haven't worked they out. They probably put lower odds of yet. them doing a third one because they're like, oh, they always do a third. They one. always Once do it. <laughs> Once they've done two, they always fuck up. It's bad odds now. You you want to bet on them doing a fourth. That's the real money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Glip Glop know how to fucking party and gamble our ways out of our schmoogles. Oh. Now we've got a fucking Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. They don't have a monopoly on saying nonsense. Uh, the realities. Mm. But also talking reality, but this reality and like how we got here. It's always kind of weird being human, basically, because there's this part, you know, you don't remember you being born or anything. There's just this kind of part where you just kind of switched on. And that's, like, your starting point in life, basically. And then your world kind of, like, opens up from that. That is true. Because you think, you, you know, don't remember being a baby. Barely I, anyone has a lot of toddler memories. I remember the first time I walked. And I can't, oh, nice. I think that might be my earliest memory. So, I don't know how old, a couple of years, I guess. Fair enough. But it's not like I remember everything else around then. No, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've got one where I, my brother scared the shit out of me in the crib. <laughs> I think that's my earliest memory. <laughs> it switched me on. <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> I, I do remember being a child and, like, well before school age. And I remember doing math all the time. Uh, like, yeah. so you're not told units you're not told how things work but I remember I always used to stare at like I'd look at tiles and various things and I'd count down them and I'd count across them but looking back I recall definitely counting but I didn't know numbers (laughs) what the fuck was I counting in like I must have had imaginary words which would have represented units and I probably just went "Eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, uh," and then I would have multiplied eh, eh, by eh. And I would have gone, oh, well, that's this. <laughs> and I would have known, and eventually someone would have taught me the units. I wonder what most kids' memories were. I wonder, mm. what, I wonder what most, most, most little kids, like, I wonder what they think about. Well, the reality's weird. You're right. You said just that switch-on moment. Yeah, exactly. Like, most of them just wandering around, not really thinking about anything. Just grinning. Just grinning at you. <laughs> like, what are you thinking about? And they're just grinning because they're like... They're not thinking. Yeah. They're not thinking. They're but, just doing um, what they're doing. That brings me to... So then you basically learn about your world from then on through all these books and shit and, like, all these history books. And now in, like, this modern age with internet and we're getting a lot more communication between countries and a lot more information's being compiled and readily accessed to everyone. We're finding... Add a lot of different facts about history and our history is kind of changing a bit. This is good. I think I see where this is going. And so it's just like, how can we be a hundred percent sure that our history is our history, that it all actually happened as it was written down, you know, is because we're all just reading this shit from books of, from people that we don't know, just taking it on faith that they're right and telling the truth. So are you suggesting maybe... Are you are you a Christian here? Are you going to suggest that maybe the world is only like 80 years old? No, no. <laughs> no. I well, think Christians say it's well, like a couple of thousand. Kim Jong says it's 130. Well, what's well, what's well, your call, Well, whatever the glorious leader has made um, the world, you know, there's, there's only been three of him in his celestial uh, presence, so... 
you know, whatever um, Kimmy decides how old the world is, that how that's how it is. But that's how it is for North Koreans, though. That's their perception of their world. I'm, I'm trying to do the math in my head because there's a but, part of me is going, wants to say, you know, he could be right if if all the history is lies mm, and we just believe. Well, I I believe the Earth's millions of years old. Well, so that, do that's, I. That's my own belief. But, I, I, um, I hear what you're saying. Then what if the universe was just made in 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 its own jar? a hundred years ago but we believe for some reason that it was made yeah. much longer well yeah exactly there's all that thing that we could be like a science experiment and whatnot, and like you know they could make it that like we believe that it's this much old but that's kind of just like the units we've put on it in our reality where it's just like you know the scientists above us are just like lol xd Grandpa's experiment is going well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these fuckers. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's kind of... I don't know. It's really hard for the common person to be 100% sure because, yes, you can just go and look up the history of what everyone believes and everything, but it's just like... That's just written down. If you keep asking, you know, who wrote this, who wrote that, who wrote this, it all just traces back to, you know... You either get the person that's done, like, the experiment or witness the event, where yeah. it's just like, okay, there we go, we've got an eyewitness, you can really definitively prove that and stuff as much as they can believe and can recall events without error. And then also, in the science side, you can track it down to the scientists and be like, okay, you can actually do this experiment, and look at these numbers and shit as well. But there are things in, like, further back history, like in ancient history as well in Egypt, where we just kind of interpret it and whatnot, and it's like, well, we might not, we might have interpreted it wrong, we might be missing something and everything. A really good example is that for ages, and it's still a big belief now, there's Thomas Edison inventing electricity, where we really know it was a cover-up, and history was kind of corrupted and changed because it was really Nikola Tesla that did the first experiments with history. I'm going to blow your fucking mind on electricity. Yeah. First electricity, I think, was the Egyptians, or it's thousands of years old, mm. and they can control electricity in a jar. It, it's, sure. it, it's just a uh, clay jar. You can look at them online. They like, teach you how to make them, and it's the first thing that was ever able to hold electricity. Now, obviously, this is not super functional. Like, um, they would have been able to... I mean, they would have used it for, obviously, something. I, I, I mean, I'm not a historian. Otherwise, these answers can be found online. Um, but you are right. Tesla was the one who was talking about, hey, how are we going to make giant grids and really carry what's a real current, not a jar's worth of electricity. Well, that might be where Tesla started coming up with the stuff, you know. It, it could have been. But also, um, um, when Tesla was alive, even Edison, um, they did have the world fairs. So um, they would have got information from other countries. Um, but... A normal person wouldn't have known these things because um, we take for granted how much we can know about history and the world now. And a hundred years ago, you 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 couldn't. You had mm. to ask someone who was on a sailing ship who probably had ten types of different diseases and mental illnesses, and you had to take their word for it of what was going on in another country. And uh, I mean, we uh, a, a lot of the stuff people were saying wasn't true, and you had to work out what what was and what wasn't yeah um because i mean i i know that a, a story that came out of india this is this is weird this is true um uh people probably seen it on different shows where uh they can hold light bulbs and light them up and they mm. claim it's their own internal energy it's not their energy they've hooked a battery up to their flesh on another part of them and if it's a direct current and it's not too high or a voltage, the current just runs through you, electrifies your body slightly. It's enough to turn light bulbs on and it's also enough to set uh, bits of paper on fire. Um, so people would have seen these things and gone, is that real? So some Western scientists would have probably been trying to study things that weren't real. And then there were things that were completely real, like the jar of electricity. Um, but if you're born now, you can look online and it seems obvious what's real and what wasn't real. Mm. So I guess even our reality's changing now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. 
and your uh, perception of history and what the world is and what the world was, you know, you can never really be a hundred percent sure. You just can't. It's um. It's a lot easier these days to uh, confirm some things, but there's a lot of things that have just been lost to time. But yeah, <laughs> and uh, think about. Things that are lost and uh, perceptions of reality. I have a story that happened to me last night. I live across the road from this fucking dodgy as fuck apartment building. Um, And there was two fucking guys that were looking a bit lost and stumbling around. But one of them, like, came out of the building, stumbled out of the building first. And... It was like, and it's kind of making the general noises, and and the other guy came out. And he's like, oi, 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 and it's like, oh fuck's sake, it's like one something at night. I'm just trying to sleep, and the guy's just like, oi, and he's like, oi, come back here. And he's like, fuck off, and he's just like, and the other guy's, like, oh fuck you up. And he's like, oi. Come here! And he's like, ah, oh, fuck off! And the guy's like, I'll suck your dick! <laughs> and the guy's like, no, fuck off! And the guy's like, I'll suck your dick! I'll suck your dick, mate! And he's just like, fuck off! Fuck off out of here! And he's like, I'll suck your dick! And they just went down the street like that. And I was just like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> And you live in a good area. Apparently. But what the actual fuck? Not fuck you, fuck off, or suck my dick. I'll suck your dick, mate. It's just the alien seeing how you'll respond to the scenario. Just just roll over and try to get back to sleep. Talk about it in my podcast the next day. Fuck. But uh, yeah, on that uh, little colourful note, that's uh, gonna end it here for today. We gotta go out, have some food, get our feet on. You know how it is. But uh, yeah, that'll be the Packers signing off for this week. Chief Blitz Freak, and we're out. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>